Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure that you ask questions in the comments or at my email address, which is in the description or at the end of the video. So watch to the end and you get the email address, right? Without further ado, my wife told me this one was an important question. So here we go, drum roll please. Okay. Yeah, this is very topical. Okay, so this is February. I'm recording this on February 3rd, 2020. And uh, the question is, what is the difference between SARS and MERS and the coronavirus, the 2020 coronavirus? So, um, okay, so obviously this is very topical right now because the coronavirus, the 2020 coronavirus is an ongoing problem and has been declared by the WHO, the World Health Organization, to be a... Uh, pandemic. I, I don't know if it's potential still or if it's actual, but certainly it's terrible. Um, I believe, you know, this is <laughs> this is one of those things that's ongoing. I believe there's over 17,000 cases already and I think 362 deaths, which puts the death rate um, somewhere around 2% if I'm doing the division correctly in my head. So it's, it's pretty severe. Um, so the question is, what is the difference between SARS, which I believe happened about 2003, and MERS, which happened about 2012, and the coronavirus? Interestingly enough, they're kind of <laughs> separated one by nine years and one by eight. Hopefully the next one won't be in seven years. That will not be very good. Uh, anyway, so the, the difference between them is, so SARS was severe acute respiratory syndrome, I believe. And MERS is Middle East Rep Respiratory Syndrome. I believe that was a much smaller outbreak than the other two. Uh, SARS was on the order of 8,000 or so. I only remember that number in particular because it was passed by the coronavirus of 2020 very rapidly. Um, what's more interesting, actually, and what's more to the point, is that these are all effectively the same thing. They're all coronaviruses, and I'll throw up a picture of one. Corona, which comes from the, oh, is it Latin or Greek? <laughs> I'm going to go with Latin. It might be actually Greek. But Corona is the same thing as coronet, which is like a crown that a king or queen wears. And it's the little spiky thing. So it's like a round thing with little spiky ends on the end of it. So it's like a round virus with spikes, which is why it's called a Corona, which is also exactly why the sun has a Corona around it, because it looks like it's got like a little ring with little spiky things. So there's some bonus elements to it. Um... This is, what's it called, a zoo, zoonotic or zoo something or other. Anyway, it comes from animals. Uh, I believe it, gosh, it was only like a couple of years ago in 2017, I think, that the SARS virus was directly and officially tied to a virus in bats, in cave-dwelling bats in China. And there's a good chance that the other ones are more or less the same. Certainly the primary culprit in Wuhan this year is a uh, an animal a market that had a lot of exotic live animals in it and four of the workers were the first ones with reported cases on December 29th of 2019 so it's just barely a month over that and we've already hit 17,000 cases worldwide which is you know fairly terrifying um but all three of these diseases are caused by more or less the same virus they're all coronaviruses which means that they all have the same sort of shape. They're all slightly different from each other. Uh, the genome for the coronavirus 2020 was actually sequenced, I believe, like on the 15th of January. It was done extremely rapidly after the outbreak. And certainly the, uh, you know, <laughs> global markets are being affected by this. It's pretty terrifying to think that, you know, the entirety of China is starting to become isolated and they are one of the primary, if not the primary, manufacturing centers in the globe. And so a lot of industries are going to be affected by this very rapidly. Uh, it's also, I think, the R factor, which is the ability for a person to infect another person, is somewhere around 2.4 right now. Again, these are all moving targets, so it's going to change. But that is a reasonable R factor. It's not super high. But the fatality rate right now is around 2%, like I said. I believe for the SARS outbreak, it was actually over 9%, maybe like 9.5%. It was very, very high. And in people over 60, which is again in the coronavirus 2020, um, same exact problem. 
you've got uh, an issue where uh, the infected people who are over 60 years old and or in poor health, their prognosis is substantially worse. I think in SARS, it was like over 50% for people who were above 60 years old who contracted the disease. So uh, <laughs> as I start to approach 60 years old, that's a terrifying thought that like I'm going to end up in that category soon, which is like the people who end up getting like who die from this all. Um, the symptoms who, uh, like when people get it, the symptoms are more or less like the flu, but then it turns into pneumonia. So I think at the beginning, it's like headaches and low grade fevers and, you know, just generally feeling crappy. Um, but then within one to two weeks, you actually developed pneumonia type symptoms. So your lungs start to fill with fluids and everything. And that's the uh, real killer. If you, if you develop those symptoms, it's extra bad. Um, an additional note about the uh, corona outbreak is that in all cases, I believe there is the sense that a lot more people actually get this disease than report the disease. Because a lot of people just think it's the flu, right? If you're healthy and your immune system is working well and everything's going well, you are like, well, okay, I'm kind of sick, but blah, you know, <laughs> not going to go to the doctor. I'll just weather the storm. And if you do something like that, which is totally fine, then you don't end up reporting it. And so that doesn't go into the database. So, you know, the 2003 SARS outbreak, which was something in the 8,000 range, um, that was 8,000 cases that were reported. The, you know, the odds are that it could be two, three, four times that much because a lot of people just got sick and just, you know, stayed home and were like, blah, I feel terrible. <laughs> but it, it, regardless of the situation, the, the bad part is that of the people who get significantly ill, like get pneumonia symptoms and things like that, those people have a fairly high chance of dying. And it's very likely that, you know, right now, I think if if this outbreak only has about a 2% mortality rate, I know that it's much, much, much higher in people with compromised immune systems or people who are older, et cetera. So that's a significant area of uh, concern because a lot of people could be compromised or could be older and could have uh, lower immune reactions and therefore get really sick and therefore die. So that's a very concerning element of this. Another one that's really, really concerning is that it's just been, I think, five weeks right now since December 29th, if I'm doing my math correctly. Uh, but we've already got 17,000 cases. And at that point, it's going to go crazy. It's also terrifying that Wuhan has pretty much put down a complete quarantine of the whole area. They've cordoned it off. And yet it's still spreading that rapidly. It just means that there's nothing that people can do right. When you have a city of 10, 12 million people, <laughs> there's just no way. By the time they realized what was going on, it's kind of too late. And so I, I'm not giving... A lot of people give China a bad rap, I think, for being like uh, a little bit cloak and dagger about their disease situations. But if the first cases of this were on December 29th, and they had reported it by early January, and they have made, it seems like, superhuman attempts to kind of lock down the um, city and also China, it kind of becomes not their fault so much. It's just unfortunate that they are the epicenter of it, and they are getting an awful lot of flack for just <laughs> for, for unfortunately being at the center of this disease. Uh, it, oddly enough, you know, I think that the, the MERS was also a zootropic or, oh gosh, I can't remember the name. Something with zoo in it, right, for animals. But anyway, they were all um, these same kinds of diseases where they were being passed from another animal. Like, I think it goes kind of the vector is something like bat to something like a chicken. And the, the virus jumps and then it mutates in the chicken and then it jumps over again to human beings. For some reason, chickens and uh, several other types of animals tend to be close enough to humans that we can trade viruses, which is <laughs> not really the most awesome thing in the world. But anyway, it is what it is. So, um, so yeah, so SARS-2003 coronavirus, MERS-2012 coronavirus. Something, whatever we end up calling this thing, the coronavirus of 2020 is also a coronavirus. They are all, unfortunately, very similar diseases. They all have similar types of symptoms, and more than likely, they're going to have similar kinds of uh, mortality rates in the end. It's, it's very terrifying that so many 
of these uh, people who are getting sick and dying are people who are older and who have compromised immune systems. That's, uh, that's a very unfortunate thing. I'm going to check to make sure my information is correct because I don't want to be wrong about this when I'm <laughs> doing a video. I don't want to like tell you incorrect things and hopefully if there was anything a little bit wrong, it was there's going to be some stuff in post that will explain exactly what it is. But I'm going to check just to make sure that everything's on the, the you know on the correct end of things so that I'm not giving you misinformation. I will be right back in just a second. Okay, so to give you a little bit of an update, the official CDC uh, Center for Disease Control name of the coronavirus is actually 2019 NCOV or 2019 novel coronavirus. So uh, again, the year December 29th, it was just at the end of 2019, even though people I'm sure will remember so this is the 2020 coronavirus. It is. It was first registered in 2019. So it's the 2019 NCOV or novel coronavirus. As far as I can tell, I was correct about all of the information. The SARS outbreak happened in 2003, and it originated in the China-Asia area. Um, 2012, MERS Middle East, <laughs> Middle Eastern <laughs> uh, Respiratory Syndrome. And then NCOV, 2019 NCOV, definitely originated in Wuhan because that's where it's coming from. So that would be it. The symptoms are about correct. As far as I can tell, it looks like I was right. It was about 8,000 people who were infected with SARS. It was, it was less than 1,000 who were infected with MERS in 2012. And then it is over 17,000 and counting as, as I record this episode in the, in the 2020 or 2019 NCOV. So anyway, take care of yourself for sure. You should, you know, if you're going out in public, like maybe transportation, public transportation or something, I know this is very popular in Asia, but I think in the rest of the world, we should start to like actually, you know, wear the uh, masks that uh, people do in Asia to try to take care of other people when we're feeling ill. Um, but anyway, don't panic. If you are younger and healthier, things are going to be okay. You're, even if you contract it, you will probably, really probably be okay. Um, but if you're older or if you have a compromised immune system, you should take extreme care at this point. You are the person who this kind of disease could seriously affect. So by all means, take care. Everybody be safe out there and make sure that you, uh, you know, take care of yourself. All right, uh, a <laughs> little bit of a sobering one this time around, but I hope you appreciated the answer and got good information out of it. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and definitely make sure you ask questions here or at drknowitall at gmail.com. I am always happy to answer these questions and I hope that they are useful in some instances. Till next time, bye-bye.